G'day guys, Tom and Wade here from Different Drop. Welcome to our latest wine tasting video. Thank you. We hope you're enjoying some lovely wine whenever and wherever you happen to be watching this. Hashtag drink responsibly. Um, Wade, <laughs> what are we? What are these colourful creations on the bench today, mate? What are we tasting today? So, mate, this is our first look at the 2023 Kona lineup. We've had a couple of wines earlier, uh, but this is like the, the main staple range of Riesling, La Corse, the Roll Vermentino and the Shacarello, the Mamolo. The Shack. So, um, yeah, I mean, these are probably my favourite set of wines from Damon Kerner. So it'll be interesting to see how the 23s look. So, I mean, as far as like up and coming Australian producers, Kerner has been one of our favourites that we've loved to get behind over the years. 100%. In, you know, based in the Clare Valley. So brothers Damon and John O'Kerner took over uh, the family vineyard there. They, they're traditionally growing fruit, selling to other businesses with the, the Gully View Vineyard there in the Clare and also the Parish Vineyard and the Vivian Vineyard, so they manage as well. Yep. And then in recent years, turning out some really electric wines, some very, very cool stuff, both from classics of the Clare, like Riesling and Cabernet, uh, and then a, a suite of emerging varieties as well that they do uh, as well as anyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, it's going to be quite interesting because, like, the boys sort of built the business together um, over the last, you know, 10 years. I think 2014 might have been the first, like, Kona official vintage. Uh, but, you know, they're sort of growing up um, and they're sort of splitting up the business a little bit. So this is going to be Damon's project. And uh, excitingly, Jono's got a, a new project called Gully View Estate. Watch, which watch is, this space. Which is coming online very shortly. And those yeah. wines are very sick. So, uh, yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. Fantastic. This is our very first look at these wines. We haven't ta Have you tasted these wines? I have not. Secretly not. tasted them? I have, I have not. not tasted these wines. So we're going to start with Riesling because, hey, we're going to the Clare Valley. And that is what one does in the Clare Valley. They drink Riesling like it's water there. This has typically been a bit of a different Riesling from the typical, you know, straight up and down Clare Valley stainless steel. Definitely. Crisp lemon lime style. This has always been about texture. Uh, in fact, it's probably something you can say, a bit of a thumbprint across all the Kerner wines, is they're built on acid, early picking, acidity, and then texture and drinkability, which I love. And uh, this Riesling, uh, in terms of how it's made, uh, it's, all, it's all, everything's hand-picked. Um, for their vineyards, no machine harvesting. Um, no, it doesn't see any skins or oak, um, but what it does see is some, some solids from the winemaking and, and a few months on leaves, on fine leaves as well as it ages. Yeah. Uh, and just a little bit of um, ceramic amphora um, in terms of the aging as well. Dude, I love I love Clare Valley Riesling when it gets tricked up like this because it can be quite lean and quite anemic, especially like, you know, this is a 2023 release. We're in, what, May? April, May? Yes, April, somewhere in there, April, sorry. May of 2024, somewhere <laughs> around there. Um, and, uh, and and so, you know, it gives it a little bit of extra time before release. Like we're seeing, like, it'll be yeah. in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have 2024 Rieslings running out here. doesn't help um, the sales, mind you, Damon. I mean, if you help it handy to have this wine <laughs> in summer, it's pissing with rain outside. <laughs> it is. Yeah, let's drink a Riesling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but this, like, what he's doing is releasing it when it's ready to drink. Like yeah. it's got, because he builds in that little bit more texture, um, yeah. allows it a bit of time to relax in bottles. So it's not just searing, nervy, like yeah. battery acid yeah. acidity. Um, and taste, have you tasted it? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Delicious, man. It's yeah. like all kefir lime and sort of slaty, chalky, the deliciousness. So the vineyards, this comes from the bl a blend of fruit from the Gully View and Parish Vineyard. So the Gully View is a family vineyard planted, I think, early 70s, I believe. Um, but the parish vineyard, uh, I think, is 100 years old um, and, and yeah. they manage that site. Yeah, so there are two single vineyard Rieslings which sort of sit above this kind of blend. But uh, if you just want something, you rip the top off right now. It used to be on a cork, but now you can literally just rip the top off it under screw cap and it's an absolute wicked uh, drink. In terms of what it tastes like, it obviously has that typical Riesling acidity and freshness, and I think that's a real feature of their wines. Um, the fruit is is not as overt and tropical as a lot of other Rieslings. It's a bit more mineral or steer, limey, but then you get these amazing like, array of um, like spice and bath salts and yep. other sort of things going on. And then the texture, that kind of talky yeah. sort of character and, to it. And so it's a it's a often a characteristic I see with like ceramic egg, and it's probably that portion of it, but a slight kind of waxiness to the palate, like yeah. it, it sort of rounds it out in a way that you're just never going to get in stainless steel. Um, and it's not overly heavy because you're not using oak. So yeah. you're sort of getting the textural influence of oak without, and that sort of breathing yeah. in that space. 
without having uh, yeah, any oak flavor. You just get pure, delicious, amazing water barrel Riesling. Love that wine. This has been you know one of the Rieslings I love to collect every year, my favorite Aussie Riesling. So that's a fantastic release of that. So, All right, so from the classics, I mentioned at the top, the boys are um, very well known for their alternative grape varieties. Vermentino. I reckon Kerner makes the best Vermentinos in Australia. Yeah. Big call? No, no, I don't think that's a big call. I think that's you know, pretty well known, actually. Yeah. Because um, there's really no one who has kind of tried to push the boundaries of this variety like Damon. Yeah, it can be pretty boring and neutral, Vermentino, yeah. can't it? Yeah, it's all about shit that. Vermentino is shit. It just <laughs> tastes like nothing. Yeah, um, uh, just a seaside white. I mean, yeah. It's just a way of saying, yeah, it tastes like nothing. But these boys know what they're doing. So this is uh, from the Gullyview Vineyard. So the family site um, that had Vermentino planted there for some time. Uh, again, everything's hand-picked, hand-sorted. Hand um, very low alcohol. A big thing with these guys is early picking. Yep. You know, create that foundation of acid and freshness yep. and then work in flavour and texture around that. 12 hours skin contact, just 12 hours. It's funny with skin contact, even a few hours can make a big difference. Yeah. Um, and, as opposed to making it too overt and orange. Uh, and then it's uh, aged in uh, a combination of Sylvonian um, demi mui oak again. So uh, what's that, five, 600 litre kind of barrels. Yep. Uh, and then um, a little bit of time in stainless after that to, to just help it all into bottle. I'll tell you what, you say like seaside white, like taking the piss, but it does like, it does have that saltiness and that yeah. freshness that kind of reminds you of sort of, I don't know, ocean sea spray or something like that. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know, the smell of the beach, it really has that like, um, and Many beaches in the Clare region. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, he lives in the hills, so like yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he's got him and his wife Maddie have a have a vineyard that they set up in 2017 in the Adelaide Hills, which is where the winery is. Yeah. So Damien gets all the fruit for for these wines there, but then also you know the, he's got the Adelaide Hill stuff, which he's growing in. Still a fair detour from Lenswood down to McLaren Vale <laughs> to the to the <laughs> surf. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but these wines. What, what are, a wine. Yeah, yeah. Like so. I think he's picked it super early, right? Would you say ten and a half percent alcohol? Yeah, which is ridiculously low. Yeah, um, but it doesn't lack flavour. No, like it's got so much richness and yeah. textural intrigue, um, and that slaty, like really cut and thrust of acid yeah. that he's nailed in it. It kind of it's got acid like a riesling almost. You know, when you think about all the great white wines of the world, you know, you think the best German rieslings. You know, you think. Uh, you know, the best white burgundies, you think the best Loire Valley Chenin Blancs, you know, the best Marlborough Sauvignon Blancs. <laughs> oh, no. <Which> are... <laughs> Not those. No, no, no. It, it's it's very wacky. Grey wacky is fucking good. It's acidity and, and a mineral character. You know, it's what these great wines have. They have this this line along the palate and length, yeah. you know, that just keeps going on and on and on. And, um, you know, that's what these Vermentinos have. Yeah. They have this, this drive to them and energy. God, he handles lees so well, though, because you know when, when you when you're building texture around like quite bony, quite skeletal wines like this, sometimes you end up with just something that just tastes like lees, yeah. and they get a bit yeah. flabby. Yeah. Whereas he's just he's just got that balance so well in that twenty three. Like it's it's fresh, yeah. but it's luscious. Like it's yeah. got everything you want. Like I'm it's such a cool wine. Shot isn't down it? that. I just hate the reason. <laughs> No, God, no, that's so good. Another fucking Riesling. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, amazing wine. Yeah, that's eight. rad. And, and, you know, an exciting statement for what this variety can achieve if if treated properly and treated seriously. Uh, and, again, great farming, good vineyards, older vines, early pick, yep. and then work in texture. Yeah. Not not spitting that, bro. That is just too good. All right. All right, cool. Of course. This is this is the wine we've been selling from these guys for years. Of course. And of course, of course. And um, it's probably the wine that we've maybe had the most the most luck with with Kerner over the years because it's just that perfect modern Aussie rep. Yeah. So, of course, uh, it, it's meant to be just because it's that Corsican sort of red blend. That, that's where the name comes from. Yeah, 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 totally. So, uh, with, so what are you getting? You're getting in like a, an amalgamation of sort of French and Italian yeah. Sort of vines in yeah. Corsica. So. And, you know, there's not much Pinot up in the Clare Valley. No. And, you know, as I always say, Wade, why make a Pinot when you can make a Sangiovese, Chacarilla, Grenache, Vermitinia, Carignan blend? That is what you always say. I to always them. say that. You know, <laughs> that'll make a great shirt one day. Uh, it's it's usually pretty 
pretty consistent this wine, right? Yeah. Like it's built around like a beautiful like herbal lift on the nose, really bright red fruit, really juicy. Looks no different this year. Like no looks oak. to be no, no oak. oak. No. So no oak, um, which is which is pretty amazing. Um, and just just <laughs> fermented and aged in in stainless steel, and, and it's all about freshness. I reckon. Just from over and tasting it, just from smelling it, it's so lifted. I reckon he's even pulled back even more in 23 Yeah, in terms of just trying to keep it so light and bright. Well, I reckon because it looks 53%, I think, is pretty high percentage of Sangiovese in the blend. Like, I think there's usually a bit more Grenache in there. Yeah, okay. So that, that herbal note, yeah. I, I think it's a quite a herbal, almost yeah. medicinal kind of nose yeah. on it. Um, yeah, I think there might be that coming through this year. Isn't it cool to see these... You know, these red varieties, you think about Grenache and Sangiovese in particular, that would make these tannic, you know, more medium to full-bodied reds, mm. you know, that, that are more, they're meaty kind of red wines. And then this is just the prettiest little floral thing. Super Dainty, delicate. Dainty, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, super delicate. Just like, like Damon. Damon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and the, uh, but uh, the finish on it is delicious because the tannin is like, fine bone china like it is so delicate yeah. um and there's so much freshness and zip to the acidity oh, it's gorgeous eh? um and then it just finishes with this beautiful line of like spicy kind of white peppery finish absolutely delicious go with a million things yeah um, I, and some of these light reds my one critique of them sometimes is that friskiness and that little bit of tingly acidity can can be a bit off-putting sometimes yeah. if if they don't quite get the tightrope walk right that nails it because mm. it's it's look very light and pretty, but it but it has a you know a plushness on the palate. Still. It's almost got like an orange peely yeah. kind of note to it this year as well, which is probably like that early pick red ash in there. You can quite often get that. Um, and I, I and a little bit of vermentino this year, so there was no vermi in it last year. Right. Yeah, it had a bit of malbec in it, so that's why this is probably like a fresher, brighter yeah. version of this one. I, I love I love this release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looks really good. Unreal. Fridge red. Fridge red. All right. So the final red lineup. This is the big full-bodied, you know, three years American oak. Yeah, double Re oak. Reserva. Two hundred percent American <laughs> oak. This is maybe my favourite wine in the lineup every year. I, I think this is such a cool wine. This is the Mamolo Shacarello. Yeah. So, what is Shacarello, Tom? Good question, mate. Well, you're asking me the legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> you have any research before we do this? I didn't need any research. It's it's the Corsican variety. Yep. Ah, uh, that's all I know. So um, Damon's brother, Jono, um, travelled around many years ago around uh, Italy and to Corsica and fell in love with the wines of the region and the boys went back together and said, this feels a bit like home, this feels like the Clare and we, we should look at the varieties here and, and their suitability to, to our family vineyard back home. And they came home and they planted Shack Arillo, uh, impossible to, to spell, um, but it, impossible to put down as well. Wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. God, there you yeah, go. yeah. It looks pretty freaking Italian. Mm. like spicy um architectural like it's light bodied but in the in a similar way that you think like nebbiolo is like a structural great yeah variety. well it's a bit more time with its skins and it, it, it ages in big like against slavonian fudra a 2000 liter huge food huge vessels yeah so he's, um, making, age. So he's making like Neb. he's basically making nebbiolo yeah um but the yeah, but the tannin structure isn't anywhere near as aggressive as Neb. It's like much, much finer boned. How's the and, aromas? And, yeah, and, and the and the lift on it is really in that sort of tart cherry, like cranberry kind of fruit spectrum. Um, yeah, it's such a good. such a evocative nose. I, it just smells amazing. Usually, I think this thing is just like rip the top off it and just you know belt it. But that's probably the most like. I would want to see that in a few years version of that wine I've tasted. Maybe the wines are getting older. A, than... a little bit more wound up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's but none the worse for it. it. It's a bit more a bit more grunts and a bit more oomph there, but not I mean, I say that, but it's so pretty as well. The fruit is yeah. just there's this thing with these wines and a lot of the great producers that we're lucky to work with where, you know, the fruit has this energy. It feels alive when you drink it. It doesn't feel dried out or stewy or yeah. Uh, on the way down, it's it's just bounces along the palate. I love it. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's nervy. It's a little bit funky. It's super yeah. spicy. Um, it's got it's got mojo. I love this wine. This is one of my. If someone said to me, you know, pick an Australian red wine, 
that's a bit different uh, and that you'd like to show people, you know, around the world what we can do here. Yeah. This would be on my short list. This yeah. would be right up there. Yeah. 100%. Like cool. for different varieties, you know, you, you'd pick out, you know, a Tassie Pinot and like a McLaren Val Grenache. Yeah. Maybe a Shiraz, maybe if you have to. But um, but <laughs> I'd look for something alternative, you know, maybe the Brash NDV or this, like yeah. for these modern Aussie reds from, you know, inspired by warm regions from other parts of the world making these energetic, nervy, spicy, complex reds. I love them. I dig it, man. I think it's very, very cool. Um, and tiny production. So the Riesling and the, the course, there's a, a little bit more of, but when I say more, I mean like a 1,000 cases. 1,200 dozen or something. Not, like not even, yeah. But these two, these are two or 300 boxes each. So tiny, tiny production from uh, from Damon. So, um, Wade, I'm, I'm excited, mate. I give this release uh, out of 400 points, uh, 372. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, right. That's for a, an average of 93. There's a quick maths for you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, chat <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, I'm not going to give it a rating because I, I don't particularly like point scores, but um, I really... He says, the man who puts our emails together. <laughs> 96 plus, yeah, must buy. Yeah. Hey. But uh, I, I I rate them on the on the fucking delicious scale. Um, yeah, where do they really come at? <laughs> on the fucking delicious scale. <laughs> From like... Really not delicious to fucking delicious. They're probably like top tier, ninety five percent fucking delicious. I reckon. Really? Yeah, I I'm, think so. I'm right. I, with I you. think it's just like a very, very sick, very individual, very cool Australian lineup. And uh, Damon, just keep doing this because I I'm in love with these wines. Yeah, me too, mate. Yeah, I think one of, one of the most exciting, compelling modern Australian producers uh, with some incredible vineyards and who has a real handle on those sides and. Somehow it keeps just raising the bar, you know, each year. It's really exciting and this is a great release, guys. So get amongst it. Support Kerner. Um, jump on the, the Kerner website or our website where you can find the wines um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be really cool because we're pumping out the videos. And anything else to add, mate? No. Drink Kerner. Drink cool wines. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers.